Good morning, church. Good morning. And happy Sabbath. God is good. And about uh, eight days, to be sure, we will enter a new year. And we all can confess that God has been good for us. And today, uh, I thank God for the privilege that he gave me to stand before you to preach his word. And uh, the sermon title this morning is The New Beginning as it was always meant to be. The new beginning as it was always meant to be. Uh, as you know, the elders have been preaching on the 28 uh, fundamental beliefs. My first sermon was on the great controversy where we learned about how sin has come to existence. Started in heaven with Lucifer, who was not happy with his position and wanted to unseat God from his throne. We learned that he had corrupt about one third of the angels. A great war was erupted in heaven between good and evil. Lucifer and his angels lost the battle. We say, praise God. And, we, and they were thrown on earth. Being on earth, on earth, he managed to get our first parents to sin. Subsequently, God had to send Jesus to pay the, the ult, ultimate price for us with his sinless life, the perfect gift. That was the gift that the world is celebrating during this time of the year. Jesus came and pay the price for our sin. And Amen. the second sermon was the love of God. We learned throughout humanity, God has always wanted to have a close relationship with mankind. He created us according to his image. We are precious in his eyes. The appearance of sin at the Garden of Eden broke that intimate relationship. For God to restore humanity, he has chosen a people to showcase his love. He made a promise to Abraham that he will make him a father of a great nation. Later on, he called on Moses to lead his people from bondage to freedom with great manifestation of his power. After delivering his chosen people, or the Israelites, he gave them the Ten Commandments on the, mount, on, on the mountain Sinai, which is the law of God. This was is a clear manifestation of his love for humanity, sin, we know that God, we know that God is love. He asks us to love him with all our heart, with all our strength. Also, he asks us to love our mankind as we love ourselves. We learn that the law of God is the pathway that will keep us on track on the road of, sal of our salvation. It is also there as a mirror to show us when we sin so we can go to Jesus to claim forgiveness because the price has already paid. And this morning, I am here to tell you about a good news. A good news that it will be a day soon and very soon. 
we won't have to worry about sin. Sin, with all that it carries with, will be no more. We are looking at the millennium and the end of sin here, which will be the ultimately the new beginning that it was always meant to be. Let's pray. As I'm praying with you, please pray for me. Dear me, Father, thank you so very much once again for allowing me to stand before your people. Dear me, Father, you know my limitation and my imperfection. Lord, I pray for your Holy Spirit to give us a humble heart so we can hear your message. And at the end, we will be edified. Lord, bless each one of us here or at home who is listening to this message today. We pray and ask you all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The millennium is a thousand year reign of Christ with a sense in heaven between the first and the second resurrections. Let's look at three aspects before the millennium, during the millennium, and after the millennium. So what, so where are we now? Are we before the millennium, doing, or after the millennium? We are before the millennium, correct. So would you agree with me to say that we are on standby? Or better yet, we are on transit. So earlier I mentioned that in eight days to be exact, we will be in 2023. So we are in transit. So now all the focus now is on, on 2023, no longer on 2022. So we, as God's people, we are on transit to the next coming of Jesus Christ. It's even fair to say that we are waiting. We are waiting for the second coming of Jesus. Amen. What do we need to do while we are waiting? Can I have some answer? What do we need to do while we are waiting? Share the good news. Share the good news. Amen. Amen to that. Make disciples of others. Make disciples, yes. Watch and pray. In a sense, we need to prepare. We need to prepare ourselves. We need, we need to prepare ourselves while we are waiting. How do we do that? We need to prepare ourselves by accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior and surrounding our life to Jesus who is the way to the Father. He gave us a wonderful promise to those who accept him and love him. In John 14, verse two and three, Jesus says, my father's house has many wombs. If that were not so, Will I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be with me where I am. Where is Jesus right now? He is in heaven. So Jesus, our high priest, is interceding for us right now before our Heavenly Father. Amen. 
that preparations require from us to seek for forgiveness of the wrong we have done and to repent before the Lord. We need to forgive one another, Amen. to be on good term with one another. We need to love one another. That same preparation require of us to share the gospel to our brothers and sisters who has not experienced the beauty of salvation in Jesus Christ. Here in Chesapeake Church, uh, we do outreach every first Sabbath of the month. And many of us has participated in different ways. Some of us went you know, in the field. Some stay behind to pray. Some do things that allow us to go. And this year alone, we visited over 529 people in our neighborhood. We were able to talk to 129 people. And let me tell you, there was one time, one Sabbath, 28 of us were in the field. We were in the community. So we went in the community, 28 of us went that Sabbath. You know, it's a mission that we all have while we're waiting to go and let people know about Jesus Christ. And Proverb 11, verse 25 says, Whoever brings blessing will be enriched, and one who waters will be himself be watered. I can tell you that uh, from my personal experience, every time that I go on Sabbath and to give out uh, books and be able to talk to people, I feel refreshed. I feel very refreshed. I, I mean, there's no words really to express it, but I feel good uh, spiritually. I know that I have answered to that call. And many of us that God has placed us in different places, high places, high places even low places, and there are people that you will meet, but me, I will never meet. But he placed you in those places as his ambassador. As ambassador, you represent Jesus Christ. And then the way to do that is the way you treat people with kindness is the way you tell them about Jesus. I remember I have a cousin of mine growing up, so, uh, uh, Whatever conversation we, you have with her, she will always find a way to bring the name of her boyfriend. It doesn't matter. She will find a way, a way to bring that name in that conversation. And I'm thinking that if that will not be a good thing for us as ambassador of Jesus Christ in our conversation with people out there to bring Jesus, to find a way to let them know who we are, who we present, who we, who we represent. I think that would be a good thing. Can, uh, uh, can, uh, can we try that? Yes. Can we try it? Because it worked for her because she ended up, you know, married. I mean, uh, they got married. So I don't know. So, so it worked for her. So let's try this one to find a way to bring Jesus' name in our conversation because he put us in some places is to represent him. And we're talking about uh, preparation. So that preparation requires of us to stay on high alert. The enemy knows what is there for us in heaven. He will do anything to distract us with all his tricks. The enemy is out of time. He will not let us alone. Trials and tribulations will come on our way, but no matter what, 
we ought to stand firm. Amen. Please understand that in Matthew 24, verse 12, it says, because of the increase of, uh, of wickedness, the love of moss will grow cold. So don't be surprised when you see those things. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. Amen. While we are waiting, we need to limit our exposure to worldly things. We cannot allow our feet to take us certain places. We are living in the world, but the Bible tells us that we are not of this world. Amen. We should not allow ourselves to things that are not pleasing God. We need to maintain caution and limit our contact to things that tempt us or obstruct our relationship with God. In other words, we need to be hard on ourselves when it comes to our salvation. On a daily basis, we need to grow our faith in Jesus and our relationship with him through prayer and personal Bible study. So obviously, we have work to do while we are waiting. We cannot stay in our corner. We cannot stay doing nothing. We have work to do. My brothers and sisters, there are two big events that will happen during our lifetime while we are waiting. Death or the coming of Jesus. And it says in Matthew 24, verse 36, but concerning that day and hour, no one knows. Not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. Since we don't know the time, the day, nor the hour, we need to be ready when death knocks at our door or when we hear the trumpet sound so we can be ready because after then it is over. In Corinthians, in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51 and 55, it says, We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. And a flash, and a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised, imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that, that the reading will come true, death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting. Then, my brothers and sisters, this will be our big entry in the millennium, as is clearly explained in 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16 and 17. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so, we will be with the Lord forever. My brothers and sisters, and so, we will be with the Lord forever. The moment that we have been waiting for has finally come. What a glorious day that will be. What a joyful day that will be for those in Christ Jesus. 
He will come as a faithful groom to get his bride for a thousand years in heaven. Do you know what we are going to do in heaven during the millennium or those thousand years? The Bible tells us that we'll be giving authority to judge the unsafe who are in grave waiting for the second resurrection. We will be priests of God and of Christ, and we will reign with him for a thousand years. We will be working with Jesus in person. We will be working with Jesus in person. We'll be able to see him face to face. Amen. Then he will show us where they had pierced him for you and I. Looking at the books of life where we will understand everything, why so and so didn't make it or did make it. All our questions will be answered. Don't you have some questions as well? I do have some questions I would like to have answered, but only God can answer me. It will be a time for us to meet all the servants, all the servants of the Lord who had forgone and been waiting for this moment in years, like David, Jacob, Paul, Jacob, Paul, and Peter. As Revelation 20 verse 4 says, I saw thrones on which were seated those who had been giving authority to judge. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of the testimony about Jesus and because of the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received its mark on their forehead or their hands. They came to live and reign with Christ a thousand years. During this period of thousand years, with Jesus in heaven, we will be all clothed with incorruptible body. The blind will see, the deaf will hear. The old will be young, to never get old again. Amen. The mute will speak. Amen. The paralyzed will walk. So much hope to look for during those thousand years. Uh, and some of us will be surprised to see some unexpected citizens in heaven. The unexpected citizens are those who we know that have done some terrible deeds during their lifetime on earth, but who have repented to, to the Lord before the day has come. Amen. And from the Bible, Manasseh, one of the worst kings of Judah during Old Testament time, who repented and returned to God during the end of his life, would probably uh, be a good candidate for a surprise. We will be expecting to meet some friends, but won't be there. They will be waiting for the last resurrection. The thousand years period, therefore, will present a time for reflection on God's judgment. There may even be sadness as we, together with Christ, shed bitter tears about the people he tried to call throughout their lives, but would never return his call of love. But tears of joy might also flow as we recognize one another and love one who has gone before us. Brothers and sisters, let's make a will I print for us to meet each other that day. Amen. 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 And on the other hand, during those same thousand years, the earth will be totally desolated without living human residents since there won't be any human for Satan to manipulate, sin will not be active. 
So Satan will be bound during the millennium. And Revelation 20 verse 2 says, an angel from heaven says the dragon, that ancient serpent who is the devil or Satan and bound him for a thousand years. After the planet has been depopulated by Christ's second coming, it will regress to the original uh, desolate state, formless and void. So there will be nothing. There will be nothing. So Satan will be by himself. There will be nobody to tempt. And it will be for Satan a really a big penalty for a thousand years to reflect on what he has brought to the world. We know that in the Old Testament, on the day of atonement, doing which the sins of God's people were placed on Azazel, the scapegoat, before he was sent out into the desert to die. So it will be the same thing for Satan. Now, at the end of the thousand years, after the saints, the redeemed finished to judge the un unrighteous dead, and Satan has completed his time in prison, since he won't have nobody to tempt, the wicked dead will be resurrected. And Satan, being free from his prison, will deceive them once again. He will lead them to fight against the camp of the saints and the beloved city of Jerusalem, which, with Christ, will descend from heaven to earth. Every person who ever lived in all of world history will be present at this time. Every eye, every single person will be there. Those who accept Jesus as Savior will be with him inside the city. And all those who reject him will be with Satan outside the city. Jesus will be elevated on his throne of judgment. The tireless work of God's grace in the lives of those outside the city and the ceaseless opportunity given to them to respond to the salvation offered to them will be replayed from the books that contains those records. God will once again put himself on trial in order that Satan's accusation against him will be refuted before even those who will eject him. They will see that God is righteous in doing what he is about to do. In that great moment, every human being will, will acknowledge the righteousness of God even the wicked. Assuming fire, uh, a consuming fire will then descend on the earth and destroy all those outside the city of God. From the ashes of the old earth, God will create a new heaven and a new earth. And sin will be removed for all time from the universe. I will ask Brother uh, uh, Daniel to help me. Read Revelation 21 from verse 1 to 5. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there, were, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, come down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. 
And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Amen. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Amen. Amen. So this is what the end of sin looks like. With the fall of Satan and his followers, the corruption that has plague the earth will finally be over. Amen. Satan will no more. Sin will be no more. Death will be no more. No more suffering. No more war. No more or, or, or disease. No more hate. Sin with all it carries with will be no more. This will hold Jesus' ultimate promise that one day he will come back for us and make everything right again. All wounds will be healed. All losses will be restored. We will be his people, living in joy and peace with him for all eternity. Amen. What a glorious day. It will be the beginning as it was always meant to be. Amen. The decision to be with the Lord for eternity is for today. The decision to be inside the city or outside the city, it's yours today. Amen. It's not for tomorrow because we don't know what tomorrow holds. I have a question for you. Is there is anyone here who has not met Jesus yet in their lives? Is there anyone here? Praise God. Every one of you has met Jesus. Every one of you has that hope, the hope of peace and love being with Jesus for eternity. Promise is promise is will because he's a promise keeper. He is a victorious who have loved us so much. Remember, Jesus has left his glory to be born among us. The first time he came, he was a baby. But the second time, you will be the king. Amen. And then we better be among his kingdom. He had already paid the price. The only thing we have to do is accept him as our Lord and Savior. Salvation, he gave it to us. He paid the price. In the meantime, for those who have made the decision to accept Jesus' gift of salvation by his grace, I join my voice with Apostle Peter in 2 Peter 3, verse 14, to tell you this afternoon, while we are waiting, 2 Peter 3, verse 14, 
So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him until the end. This is my prayer for you and me. May God bless you all.